Hi everyone, my name is Carly. Hope all is well. Happy New Year. Today is Thursday, January the 6th, 2022. I hope you had a great New Year and also a great Christmas with your loved ones, friends, and family. Uh, as always, uh, you know, I love to share this word from the Lord with all of you. I do apologize for not being on before. I know it's been two months, but I've been very, very busy. And also, I've been under the weather, especially over the holidays. So now that I'm doing better, I'm here to share what the Lord's been sharing with me in the secret place over the last several days and also weeks. I hope that today's message is always a blessing, but most importantly, that it brings confirmation because I know the Lord is talking to so many of us prophetically. As always, be anchored solely in the word of the Lord. Uh, if you haven't finished the Bible, please finish it, study yourself approved, and also be anchored in the Lord himself. Make sure you have a journal so you can write down whatever God is speaking to you directly, whether it's through visions, dreams, prophetic words, or messages in your heart, in your spirit, or audible ears. Remember, God gives revelation to you directly. God gives confirmation to you directly. And yes, sometimes the Lord may use uh, God-fearing, Bible-literate, prophetic, and discerning voices of the Lord to bring confirmation to you. Okay, so I'm going to try, I'm going to try to do uh, try to share this, these words with all of you as quick as possible. I want to be respectful of your time. As always, test the spirit and be encouraged because what the Lord has spoken to me regarding 2022 is going to be amazing. I am so encouraged. I am just so just so happy. Uh, I mean, God is just mind blowing. So here here I am with the first message. This took place on the, the November the 10th, 2021. This is a word from the Lord for the body of Christ, uh, the remnant. Uh, you know, he, you know, God's been talking to a lot of us prophetically. So pretty much what the Lord is saying is to just be encouraged, keep the faith, hold the line. I know I am, you know, because God is faithful and God is true, you guys. Whatever God has spoken to you directly, it, it will not return void. God is faithful to his promises. God is faithful to his plans and his purposes for your life, for this nation, for the nations. And I'm here to encourage you guys, even though it's January 2022, I am holding the line. I, I, I am moving forward. You know, like God is faithful. God is true. The best is yet to come for this nation and the nations. And despite of what we are seeing, uh, we are not moving from our prayer posts. We're not moving from our walls that we have been commissioned by the Lord to be a watchman on the wall. God will deliver what he has promised. So the best is yet to come. Remember, just like Joshua and and his men at the time, you know, there were some Goliath that he had to take down, right, before he entered the promised land. But I'm here to encourage you that this is our time, this is our year for the righteous, this is our season, this is the time of the Lord. Of course, everything happens in God's timing, but we're in this season where God is just moving. He's moving, and, and, and although he may, not move, may not, he may not move at the pace or the velocity that you're asking. You know, remember God is king, God is sovereign, God rules, God reigns, he has everything under control and he is faithful to what he has promised. Okay, our job is to be seeking him diligently. Our job is to humble ourselves before the Lord. Our job is to pray and partner with God's will, God's purposes, God's heart, so that his plans will manifest on this earth as, his, as according to his will in the name of Yeshua. So here it is, here's the word. He gave me Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Also, he gave me the book of Luke chapter 11, verses 9 to 13. So when you get a chance, please read that. Okay, so just keep contending. Keep walking in faith in Jesus' name. Okay, November the 15th, 2021. This is a word from the Lord, and he gave it to me in three parts. This is regarding our nation. The first part, the Lord says, enter his gates with praise and thanksgiving. He gave me Psalms 100. Part two, the Lord said, America is the land of the promise. And part three, our faith is what's going to get God to move. And he gave me Matthew 17, verse 20. Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. So this just, again, this is just reaffirmation and confirmation of what the Lord has been speaking about our nation for the longest time. If you've been following this ministry and you've watched the previous videos for the last several months and years, uh, it's very consistent to what the Lord has been saying, okay? America's covenant is still viable with the Lord. That's what he said it last year. You know, America is the land of the eagle and not the snake and that the church is meant to roar and to soar, says the Lord. And, and that the Lord said that we are meant to be the head and not the tail as long as we obey him. So in other words, God's plans for America are still viable, you guys. Okay, so contend, have faith and just give him praise because the Lord is moving on our behalf and just show his name. Okay, 
this is another positive, amazing, just encouraging word from the Lord. He gave it to me on November the 16th, 2021. It was a message and also a vision, and it's in four parts. The first part says, the Lord said, the lion will not be silenced. Part two, the battle is the Lord's. And then the Lord gave me uh, to read 2 Chronicles chapter 20. So when you get a chance to read the whole thing, it was just so powerful. Part three, there is power in prayer, praise, and fasting. And then part four, the Lord said, God is the owner of the victor's crown. And he gave me this a beautiful vision. I saw this beautiful lion with his golden mane, and he had this red velvet uh, crown with the little jewels over it and stuff. And it was just so powerful. And I, and I just kept hearing the Lord say, he's the owner of the victor's crown. He's the owner of the victor's crown. In other words, God always wins, you guys, okay? No matter what it looks like. Remember, remember who you are in Christ. The Bible says that we are more than conquerors. The Bible says that God has given us the power, the authority in Christ to slay over scorpions and snakes in Joshua's name, and that we are children of the promise. We are co-heirs in Christ. We, the righteous, will rule and reign, you guys. He has given us the victory because the Bible says that greater is he who is in Christ than he in the world, okay? Remember, God's word, the does not return void. You have to believe what the Bible says. You have to believe who God says he is, and you have to believe what God says about you. So as child of the child of Christ, we are victorious in Jesus' name, and that is our portion, and God is our portion, and God is our inheritance in Jesus' name. Okay, so here's a word from the Lord regarding Hollywood. Now, if you remember back in spring of 2016, I did all these prayer posts for different celebrities. Some of the words have come to pass, glory to the Lord, uh, for some celebrities. And at the same time, there's also a wrestle against their destinies. There's a, there's a, there's a fight. There's a warfare against their destinies. So we got to keep praying for many of the artists in Hollywood. Uh, for example, Kanye West, that word came to pass. But I can tell, I can discern that there there is a battle against this his kingdom destiny so let's keep praying for him the same thing for justin bieber that word came to pass i know they're called uh you know and i know god has been putting up in my heart to keep praying for hollywood because his god's heart is to is for all to come to repentance and for all to come to the knowledge of, the, of knowing the lord so on this particular day on on uh, november the 21st god gave me this word for hollywood uh 1 john 1 9 if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our, our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness okay so um I know God's even giving me dreams about uh, Cardi B and praying for Jay-Z and Beyonce, Robert De Niro, the Backstreet Boys, you know. So, again, let's keep praying for Hollywood. I remember about in spring 2016, and God reminded me of this word. He told me back then, and I released that word years ago. You can just check out the videos in the post where the Lord said, regarding Hollywood, Hollywood become holy wood because they will realize that it was the wood on the cross that Jesus also died for them too. Okay, so remember church, uh, we're not here to judge. We're not here to get bitter or envious or jealous because of what God is doing in people's lives. Listen, we were all wretched before we found the Lord. And if God can forgive us our sins, he can forgive their sins. Okay, so let's go, let's remove the self-righteousness. Let's remove this, this religious spirit. Let's remove the spirit of pride off of us. And let's humble ourselves before a holy God and say, Lord, have your way. You know your purposes. You know your ways. And Lord, I partner with your heart. I partner with your will. I partner and bless what you want into people's lives so that you can get the glory all for yourself. That should be our posture before the Lord. That should be our heart for the Lord and for his people, including non-believers, including the worst of the worst, right? And just show his name. Okay. So, um, November the 21st, 2021, uh, this is a word from the Lord regarding Elaine Maxwell. Now, mind you, um, I don't know all the details. Uh, I'm not one to watch the news. I'm not one to uh, follow up on people and what they're saying, whether it's media, whether it's other prophetic voices. I, I don't I don't pay attention to that because, you know, as a servant of the Lord, I have to make sure that I'm hearing from God correctly. And it's not my thoughts. It's not, you know, my perception. It's not like what I'm thinking or, you know, none, none of that. So I have to always make sure that I'm hearing from God correctly. Which is, which is why I kind of stay away from that. Now, I do pay attention. I am cognizant, like headlines, bullet points of things that are happening so I can pray as the Lord leads. But again, I'm not, I'm not obsessed. I'm not focused on the headlines every day because if I want the absolute truth, I go to the Lord, I go to the Bible, and I have my journal ready so I can write down whatever God wants to share with me regarding anything, anyone, or any place, right? So regarding Gilead Maxwell, um, there were two things that the Lord said about her on November the 21st, 2020. And I heard the Lord say this, that she is God's slingshot against Goliath. Uh, the Goliath is this evil cabal, if you know what I mean. Uh, and I heard the Lord say a hurled stone. So if you know the story about David and, David and Goliath, it was David and there was the slingshot and the stone and, and of course the Goliath, right? So God was saying that he's going to use her 
like she's a hurled stone. It's like he, it's like he's going to use her to take down the Goliath of our time, which is the, the New World Order. And the Lord then asked afterwards, after t- saying that, he reminded me of the December 2019 word. Check it out. Go to the videos back in the day. Check out the, the post that I did on Facebook, etc. Where I released that word, where God showed me that POTUS 25, uh, he is the David. That who has been called and commissioned by the Lord, anointed and appointed and chosen to take down the Goliath of our time, which is a new world order. And pretty much that she's, uh, you know, Gawain is just, the, is just the, the stone, right, that God's going to use. So glory to the Lord. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think just a few days ago, her, her verdict just came out or whatever. I don't know. I just kind of read the headline. But um, I'm holding on to this word. I believe, believe that the Lord is, is moving behind the scenes. And his, again, his word does not return void. Okay. Next, uh, speaking of justice, which is, uh, it, it is it's the, it's the essence of who the Lord is. Uh, God is a God of love, mercy, and grace, but he's also a God of judgment and wrath and justice, my friends. And justice, is something, ju- justice judgment, and wrath is something that he's been telling me over and over again in the, in the last year. Uh, very, very, God's been very emphatic in, in, that, in, that, in, in, that, um, in those words. Uh, he's been emphasizing over and over again his heart for justice and judgment and wrath against the wicked. Uh, so he gave me this word on... December the 5th, uh, 2021, and uh, this is for the Georgia cabal, okay, all those implicated in the, in the, in the theft of 2020, you know, uh, this is what the Lord said, you've been put on the balance, you've been put on the balance, and then he gave me Daniel 5, chapter, Daniel 5, verse 27, where it states, Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting, okay, this coincides with the word that he spoke over the summer of last year, where he said that Georgia's on his mind, uh, you know, this also confirms that the Lord spoke about all those that are part of Dominion. I literally, when God gave me that word, I think it was May of last year about Dominion and how the, the folks in Dominion, that, that company in itself, how they um, have mocked the Lord. They, they're, they're, there's a reason why. Okay, so really quickly, uh, like what the Lord showed me many, many years ago, the wicked, Luciferians, etc., these devil worshipers, they use the, what's holy uh, of, of the Lord. And they hijack the words. They hijack the terminology. You know, they do. Uh, they you, you use what's holy to profane it. That's what they do, as they worship the devil. So a lot of they speak in code, and that's what God showed me many years ago. That the wicked Luciferians and all these Satanists and, and reptilian shapeshifters and everything else, all these secret societies, they work in codes to send their message, to do their rituals, etc. So Dominion in itself, as a company. You know, God was showing me at the time that that's not a coincidence why they named themselves that way. They were uh, they were coming against the Lord. They were coming against God's word. They were coming against God's purposes and declare declarations because God said that God has given us human beings the dominion over the land, right? And the fact that that company has hijacked the word is because they want to they want to be in dominion and that we're supposed to be subject to them, God, right? But God is saying no uh, that they were they're blasphemous, and I literally saw the fire of God coming out of out of his mouth uh, against all those implicated with the dominion uh, and all those related to the whole theft okay so georgia is on his mind you guys and this word right here you've been put on the balance it is uh it's god's declaration again of his judgment uh, against the wicked now i also want to share something with y'all uh so over the holidays for thanksgiving uh you know i went to visit family and um literally the day after thanksgiving that friday uh on the november 26th um the Lord was like, get your shofar and, and go sound the shofar in D.C. Now, mind you, if for those that have been following this ministry, you know that um, God has commissioned me, like many of us out there, with a shofar. I have two of them, actually. I have a ram's horn and I have an antelope horn, antelope horn the, the longer one. And it's a very powerful weapon in prayer. Okay, think of, you know, remember the story of Joshua and the walls of Jericho. So when you get a chance, we'll read the book of Joshua. So like myself and many others, God commissions us to sound the shofar. It's very powerful. We, we sound it off like, a, you know, a, a, over institutions, over buildings, corrupt places, locations, even over families, you know, homes, whatever it may be, however the Lord wants to, however the Lord wants to use us. But what I'm trying to say is, as the scripture says, for our, for we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the powers of darkness and principalities, right? And as the Lord previously said a few months ago, that when we sound the shofar, it is putting the devil on notice. It is telling the enemy that what we can't take him down, God can only take the enemy down. Only God can destroy the darkness. Only God can destroy the demonic war- warfare in the name of Jesus, right? And it is our way of humbling ourselves like the day, like Joshua, Lord. We're here to submit to you. We're here to submit to your power. We're here to submit to your spirit. We're here to submit to your word. We're here to submit to your authority in Jesus' name. And that what we can do, only God, because the Bible says only God can go. Uh, God, if, God, if God is for us, who can be against us? And as we know, uh, uh, God-fearing 
Bible believer and prophetic Christians, we know that God goes before us, my friends. God fights our battles, God fights our wars, and God brings our enemies down. So anywho, so that day, going back to the story, so this is the crazy part. So I've been blowing the shofar for a long time now. Like, if you followed my journey back in 2020, how God commissioned me to go sound the shofar over 19 states, 54 cities, over every over, over every state capital, over every city hall, over governor's mansion. God had gave me a scripture for each place that I went to. God, I did the walls of Jericho in every single place. And it was in the Bible Belt and also during the, and also over the 13 colonies. And in addition to that, um, I also, God had me like, you know, pray over places that had strongholds, okay, principalities, and God took them down in Jesus' name. So I'm saying all this is because I've been doing this for quite some time. And in fact, in my prayer room, there are days for the most part that I am stunned with the shofar. You know, it's, it's also praying a blessing. And, you know, as I pray, you know, for the community, I pray for the city, et cetera. However God leads me, it is, again, it's a very powerful weapon in a spiritual sense when we're praying in Jesus' name. So anyway, going back to the story, uh, so that day on November 26th, the Lord's like, okay, you got to go back to D.C. I need for you to go and sound the shofar. So I did. And he's like, you know what you did last time, last year, you sounded the shofar all over D.C. Now I need for you to do, I need for you to do the, same, the same thing all over again. I'm like, okay, Lord. So I went to the White House, sounded the shofar, which, by the way, like this time around, like the gates, there were no more gates. The gates were gone. The fences were gone. And then when I sounded the shofar, you know, and then and prayed. And then the Lord sent me to, to, the, to the state buildings, okay? Uh, sorry, the Senate buildings. Uh, and then the Lord's like, okay, go to the Congress. So then towards the end, I actually went uh, to um, the Supreme Court, uh, the Shafar at the Supreme Court, and then also across the street at the U.S. Capitol. Here's the crazy part, and here's the message. On November the 26th, 2021, it was a very, very cold and very windy day. And as I sounded the Shafar, I heard the melody of the song of the military song taps come out of my shofar and I did it multiple times and the crazy part it was happening in on the side of the street where the cap the US Capitol is standing so I prayed and I found the shofar multiple times and that same melody kept you know it kept coming out of my shofar I've never heard that before in my life and my sister in Christ was in the car waiting for me as I was doing that and anyway, so as I was sounding it and it, the same melody kept repeating itself, I had this like, um, I don't want to say uneasy, but it was the fear of God came over me because I discerned what God was declaring upon the U.S. Capitol. Okay, so I discerned that the Lord was declaring his final warning against the wicked and that his justice, judgment, and wrath is eminent and is falling against the U.S. Capitol. Now, you know, mil the, the, song, the military song taps, it's usually a song of a funeral. Now, it could, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, is it a spiritual thing? Is it a spiritual funeral? Is it a physical funeral or is it both? And I didn't hear the Lord say much about that, but he did remind me of the word that he gave me last February, 2021, where the Lord said, it will be a solemn day for America once everything else gets exposed, okay? If you catch my drift, we're talking about the, the rings, okay? We're talking about the, the sex trafficking and all that corruption and all that perversion, you know? Uh, and God was reminding me, reminding me of that. So um, I was I was uh, blown away and the fear of God came over me so strongly. And, uh, you know, we, we pray, we pray for our leaders, we pray for all those, uh, you know, that uh, need, to, need the Lord, that they need to repent. But I also discern, and it kind of goes back to what God said saying in Ecclesiastes 3, 4. I released this word four years ago, and little by little it's coming to pass, is that the Lord said, the time is coming where the wicked will weep and mourn, and the righteous will laugh and dance, okay? It goes back to what God's been saying for the last four or five years, I released this word, and he's been saying it over and over again this past year about justice, the tipping of the scales, where the righteous will rule and reign, okay? So... Again, we pray for our nation. We pray for our nation's leaders. Uh, even the, even, even. Um, let's go, Brandon. Right? We pray for Brandon. We pray for all the wicked. I know. I know what God has spoken, and and I know that that administration is a false flag, according to the Lord. I know the Lord said it's temporary. The Lord said that it's not the death of a nation, but a rebirth. Says the Lord that 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 fake administration says the Lord is null and void, and it represents the seven things that the Lord hates. This is all the things that God has spoken about them since January the twentieth, two thousand twenty-one. Okay, and a lot of the stuff that God's been saying, it has been coming to pass. 
So I am I am holding on to the Lord. I'm holding on to his promises. I'm holding on to what his plans are for this nation. I know it's not over because the Lord said it's not it's not the death of a nation, but a rebirth. So in the meantime, we pray. And going back to this post, I want to play with the sound the sounds of a melody for those that may not know what it sounded like as I played my shofar. Bear with me. I kept hearing that over and over again. I'll play it again. Right there. coming out of my shafar over and over and over again. So when I was done praying over the capital, US Capitol, I got in the car and I talked to my sister in Christ and I said, did you hear that sound? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, what, what, what did you hear? think about that? And she's like, it sounds like the song from Taps. I'm like, oh my God, that's exactly it. That's exactly what I thought. And I told the Lord, I'm like, Lord, that sounds like Taps. And she just confirmed it. So um, it could, again, it could be a spiritual, it could be a physical, it could be both a funeral. But I will say this: once everything c comes down, as the Lord has promised for so long, uh, as I remember Him telling me years ago, and I had this vision back in spring of 2016, I saw men in suits being arrested. I, the Lord said prostitution rings will be exposed. Everything's going to come to the light. So if, in essence, any exposure of any kind, it is a funeral for all these wicked people. So you know, let God be true. Let me be the liar. I'm just sharing what has happened on that day, and I just wanted to encourage you with that to keep on praying for this nation in Jesus' name because God's justice is at the door, it's at hand. Okay, so another word that the Lord gave me, and this was back on December the 3rd, 2021, uh, here to encourage the body of Christ, to encourage us all that although man is unfaithful, God is faithful. That's what the Lord was saying. No matter what it looks like, you guys, stop believing, stop trusting in people, stop relying on people, but only rely on the Lord. Hold on to what God has spoken to you. Hold on to God's word that does not return void because God is a God of character. God is a God of justice. God is a God of truth and righteousness, and his word does not return void. So although people can fail you, man, you know, women are unfaithful, right? Like, you know, you know, you know God is always faithful. God does not lie, and God is not teased. And he is a faithful God. Okay, so I'm here to share this dream from the Lord with all of you. This was very powerful. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak in code for the for because if I give you the whole story uh, in, in greater detail, and you can look up the post and you can read it for yourself. But if I tell it to you, uh, you know the whole story. You know, for fear of being banned or, or taken down, I have to speak in code. But here's the thing. So the Lord gave me this dream on December 11th, 2021. Uh, this was uh, the theme of this is an Alice in Wonderland dream. Now, mind you, I've never read the book. I've never seen the cartoon. I was never drawn to it, even as a kid. I just didn't like that movie. I just didn't like it, period. But the whole point is that the Lord gave me this dream, and what God was showing me afterwards, and he was telling me, is that the collapse of the Mad Hatter's party. The collapse of the Mad Hatter's, Mad Hatter's, Mad Hatter's party. So here's the thing, in the dream, I saw this huge, beautiful ballroom, okay? And I saw dignitaries and all these elite people at this table. Beautiful, like, like think of like uh, Walls of Astoria. Think of like a really high-end like hotel, like a Ritz Carlton type of hotel, okay? But it was a ballroom, and all of a sudden, all these people were sitting at this uh, at this table, and they're all having a good time. They're all partying. They're all you know just relishing there, you know, etc. And all of a sudden, I see like I, I hear and I see like a crack on, on the walls of this ballroom, and all of a sudden, the crack gets louder and louder and bigger and bigger. And the people on the table were about to, were really concerned because then the dust starts to kind of like cascade a little bit upon them and they knew that at any moment this whole ceiling is about to collapse and in the dream the crack got bigger and bigger and all of a sudden the whole ceiling collapsed and from it when it fell not only did the ceiling fall but a lot of teacups and plates and all these porcelain china like really high-end porcelain china cups and plates and of all sizes uh think of teacups and stuff it, it all fell down and it crushed them crushed them especially those that were sitting on that table so the Lord was just showing me all these things about it, and uh, this is, now follow me here. So that was the, pretty much part part one of the dream, okay? Here's part two. The theme of this dream was Alice in Wonderland, part three. The next part of the dream, I saw, oh yeah, I saw this trail, 
and I kept hearing in the dream, follow the white rabbit. And I saw these little white rabbit masks like on the floor and on the ground and I had to pick them up, right? And I kept hearing, follow the white rabbit. And then I come across in this, in this part of the stream where um, I, at the end of this trail, there was like this kind of door and there was an evil, wicked, uh, you know, um, gatekeeper that was there. So, okay, so here's the thing. So I, I finished this trail and I come across this door and there was like an evil demonic uh, gatekeeper. And in the dream, I knew that if I passed through that door, there was gonna be some really dark, occultic type of world like that I was about to enter into. So, but in the dream, I rebuked that spirit and, um, and that was basically it. But I, I knew in the dream, I felt in the dream, it was, it was dark, it was occultic. Uh, it was, you know, sex related, like trafficking, uh, rituals and, and things of that, that nature. So I knew it was demonic, I knew it was dark. Uh, so anywho, so um, that was pretty much it. And I remember that like right before I woke up, I, like, I kind of had like an aerial, an aerial view of the town where this thing was taking place. And anywho, um, so r right after I, uh, I woke up, uh, I, you know, I went later to the Lord, I said, Lord, what are you showing me now, God? Like, what is going on? Like, I, 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 I discern what you're trying to show me. And um, God was just revealing all these things to me. But so in the, in the process, God was leading me to do a quick search on Alice in Wonderland just because I don't know much about the story. Uh, I don't, again, I never watched the movie. I never, I never read the book. So here are some facts that I was able to discover upon uh, my search with this um, movie, okay, with this, the theme of Alice in Wonderland. So facts number one. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll is a story about Alice who falls down a rabbit hole and lands into a fantasy world that is full of weird, wonderful people and animals. The second fact, what does the Mad Tea Party symbolize? The social significance of the Mad Hatter's Tea Party, there are no rules here, and everyone present at the tea party is operating beyond social constraints. The Mad Hatter's Tea Party can be taken as a parallel to society. Society is a collection of social norms which we abuse and use to our own advantage. Uh, the last fact that I was able to discover is Alice in Wonderland about drugs. The book and various films have all been interpreted as making reference to drug abuse with Alice drinking potions, eating mushrooms, and hallucinating as if she were on LSD. All while the world around her changes frighteningly and her mood and perceptions are hugely altered. So, connect the dots, okay? Um, that's what, you know, uh, the theme of this whole thing is. Now, think about how that connects with us in society, right? So, um, that afternoon, and I was like, okay, Lord, uh, you know, what, do you, what, would you like to show, what would you like to show me regarding this dream? What are you trying to say? And I kind of already knew. I was just, I just needed that affirmation and that confirmation from the Lord because I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I'm, if you're a believer, if you're a God-fearing, Bible, or prophetic and discerning believer, I'm sure God gives you dreams about expo that, that he exposes um, the wicked, okay? And some of these dreams can be very, very um, scary at times. Uh, but, the, you know, a lot of people sometimes, they've asked me, like, Carly, why, why would God give me a dream so powerful? Because God is trusting you with that kind of dream so you can pray against all evil. God is showing you what the devil's up to, what his, what the devil's minions are up to. And that way, our prayers, you know, we, we pray against evil. We pray that everything gets exposed. That's why God is trusting you with a dream like that. But I'm, I'm saying all this is because when God gives you dreams, whether it's about praying against sex trafficking, whether it's children, whether it's people, when God exposes the um, the dark secrets of of others, uh, whether they're influencers or just an, or just the regular person, um, it's, sometimes the dreams are very strong, right? So again, I knew this dream. I had an idea. I discerned what God wanted to show me, and I was just afraid to get that confirmation from the Lord because uh, this topic is a very very painful topic. Um, I, I've seen dreams. I've heard dreams uh, of, that God has allowed me to see and hear. Uh, what the pain and torture of victims that are under these types of rings, especially on, on children. So that in itself uh, is very, very, um, very, uh, just it's just very intense at times, right? So anyway, um, that day, that afternoon, I said, okay, Lord, what are you trying to show me? And he was showing me, and I heard him say the following scripture, Judges 16, verse 30. Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. Thus he killed many more when he died than while he lived. And God reminded me of the scene where Samson 
uh, he pushes the pillars and the pillars collapse and it falls uh, you know over the Philistines and it killed like I think 2,000 people so God was saying that the same thing God's gonna do now I don't know if it's physical in the, or a spiritual sense or bring the, bring the whole cabal down right but that's what God was showing me so and, it, and technically it, it wasn't even Samson at the time it was the Spirit of God that did all that through Samson right so I just I just was so encouraged with that word because this was God's uh, God's declaration that these dirty Philistines, all of these you know traffickers and and all of these you know uh, corrupt, demonic, satanic, Luciferian secret societies, as the Lord has been warning for quite some time, He's going to bring it all down. In fact, in February of 2020, God gave me this word. He said, "Secret societies will be secret no more, for the Lord's going to expose their manuals and their rituals to show the world what the wicked had to do in exchange for power, money, and fame." You know what they had to do for all those things you know they sold their souls right and then the lord said that when he does that it's going to create shock waves says the lord and then the lord said back then that in addition to creating shock waves the lord said you know when all this is brought down and this all gets exposed the world's going to realize that their stars are nothing but fallen thus says the lord so that was from february 2020 this right here with the man hatters party is just again another another confirmation of what god's going to do and he's going to bring all of them down in jesus name okay so here to encourage you, this is December the 13th, two days after that dream of the Mad Hatters. I, in prayer, this is a very powerful word from the Lord. I heard him say it. Uh, he said, and I quote, and I'm going to tell, I'm going to show it, to, I'm going to say it the way I hear it, uh, you know, the way I heard it. Uh, the Lord said, I own the pieces, I own the chessboard, I am the master chess player, and I say checkmate, close quote. That's all the Lord said. It was powerful. I kept hearing the word, I say checkmate. I say checkmate, you know, and God was just, just sharing that, you know, and I, I was just like in awe once again of the Lord, uh, how he just, remember God is sovereign. He is the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent Lord, you know, who rules and reigns. He has the final say, he has the final word. And as he said it a few, a few months ago, he said, tell them that the Lord has the final say, the Lord has the final say, and he'll put it on display. And this right here, again, is a confirmation. He says checkmate because he owns the pieces. He owns the chessboard and he's the master chess player. And he always says checkmate because he always has the victor's crown because he always wins in Jesus' name. So December the 14th, 2021, uh, this is a word from the Lord regard, regarding the shofar. As you know, I, I mentioned earlier about that I have a shofar and the, the ram's horn, also the antelope horn. And this is what the Lord had to say about when we sound the shofar, the Lord says, this is the announcement of the Lord's return, the great day of the Lord. And he gave me Revelation chapter 8 and Revelation chapter 9 and also the book of Joel chapter 2. And I will read to you the scripture, Joel 2 verses 28 32, the day of the Lord. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be, will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. Okay, so very powerful word. Um, what an honor. What an honor to be chosen by the Lord and to just be used by him. I mean, he gets the glory all for himself. And he's just amazing, you guys. So uh, let's keep, uh, you know, building. Let's keep uh, planting. Let's keep sowing. And because uh, the harvest is plenty and the laborers are few. And now is the time to prepare the church, prepare the world for the, the soon return of the Lord. And of course, only the Father knows the exact year hour. But in the meantime, we remain busy and we occupy until he comes. Okay, December the 14th, 2021. This is a rebuke message for the, from the Lord for the church. A quote, here's what the Lord said. Quote, be without spot or wrinkle. Anyone who says he's without sin is a liar. Rebuke the spirit of Gomer off the church who was an unfaithful wife. Close quote. And then he led me to read Ephesians chapter 5 and the book of Hosea. When you get a chance, go read it. Uh, it was very powerful, very clear. You know, I'll read it again. Be without spot or wrinkle. Anyone who says he's without sin is a liar. Rebuke the spirit of Gomer off the church who was an unfaithful wife. So if you know your lifestyle is not pleasing to the Lord, the time is not to repent. It's time to get your house in order. It's time to obey the Lord. If you want to be blessed, if you want to be used by the Lord, it is time to say no to this world. And it is time to consecrate. It's time to be holy. It's time to repent. It's time to get delivered. It's time to live a holy life in the name of Jesus. Okay. And, and that's it. All right. 
next next scripture. I'm sorry, not next scripture. Next post. So December the 18th, uh, 2021, I had a dream from the Lord regarding the jab, also the juice. There's different names for the for the jab, and the reason why is because a lot of people that when we put the real name, we get we get you know um, shadow banned, we get um, deleted, we we get you know Facebook jail, etc. So anyhow, so this is a dream about the jab or the juice. And uh, I've been warning for quite some time, my friends, uh, the jab is not of the Lord. A lot of the prophetic words and, and warnings and messages from the Lord, revelations from the Lord regarding the jab has been coming to pass since he revealed this back in early uh, uh, February, March of 2020, right before the shutdown. A lot of this stuff has come to pass, you guys. And uh, uh, if you are a church leader who sold out on the Lord for your 30 pieces of silver to get people uh, you know, inoculated with this jab, I pray that you repent before God completely deals with you. This is not part of God's plan as the Lord spoke it back in the summer of 2020 and the spring of 2021, that this is a preliminary, this is a test run for the real mark of the beast that is prophesied in the book of Revelation chapter 13. And it is baffling to see so many in the in the church who have fallen into this trap. Others have willfully uh, decided to take it because, oh, they want to please their, their loved ones. They want to please their families. Oh, it's because they have to have their job. Oh, because they want to travel. Oh, because they want, like, they want to have the perks. Okay, so practically you just set yourself up uh, in advance uh, for the mark of the beast because you decided to uh, uh, you decided to accept what is of antichrist and not follow the Lord, not not surrender, not sacrifice yourself, right? So, you know, I, I pray that you know if that's you, repent, get right with God. Uh, if you have taken the jab or the juice against your will, you've been forced, you've been misled, you've been coerced, etc. I'm here to tell you that also repent. Go to the Lord. He wants to heal you. He wants to make uh, break, make you brand new, uh, you know, and, and just know that this is not his plan. When you read the Bible, okay, seriously, guys, we're at this point that you have to know the Bible. If you are a Christian, I don't care if your walk has been with God for 10 days, 10 weeks, 10 months, or 10 years. If you have not finished this entire Bible from cover to cover, you are a sitting duck. You're about to get played. It is what it is. You're, everyone's playing you. The, your pastors may be playing you. If you don't know the Word of God, chances are you're, you're getting played. Uh, if you don't know the Word of God, everything around you, you're being played left and right because you don't know the truth. You're being misled. You're walking in the flesh. You're walking out of emotions. Uh, you're, you're being duped every single chance that you, know, you don't even know it. So in order for you to be, be to be strong and to wear the armor of God and to not be deceived, you know, the Bible says my people perish for a lack of knowledge. If you know the Bible, guess what? You won't be duped. Whether it comes from your pastor, whether it comes from the prophet, whether it comes from the preacher, whether it comes from the first lady, whether it comes from the church member, your colleague, your spouse, your friend, your neighbor, your colleague, you're not going to get duped. So the thing is, if you want to, if you want to, uh, you know, um, know the word of God, Sorry, if you want to know the truth, you have to know the word of God for yourself. You have to study yourself for proof. You have to hear God for yourself. I tell Christians all the time, listen, you want the absolute truth, great. Then you go to the Lord and you go to the Bible and you grab your journal. You don't need a, a person in the middle. You don't need a middle man or a middle woman to get a word from the Lord. You don't. It's just you spending time with God. You know, God is there all the time. God is always talking, okay? So again, if I share these words with you, I hope that it brings confirmation to you. This shouldn't be anything new to you. If you have a relationship with the Lord, intimacy with him, what I should be saying should be confirmation. You know, okay, Lord, thank you for the confirmation. That's what you should say. But remember, you know, only we trust in God only. We don't trust in people. You don't put your faith in trusting people, whether they're believers or non-believers. We love the church. We bless the church. We pray for the church, but we are not anchored in the church. And there's a lot of lying spirits, counterfeit spirits. There's a lot of demonic activity. There's a lot of witchcraft spirits in the church. There's a lot of divination in the church. And how are you going to, how are you going to study yourself approved if you don't know the word of God? How can you detect the real versus the fake, the truth versus the lie if you don't know the word of God, if you don't know God's character, if you don't know God's content, if you don't know God's context, if you don't know God's voice, his power, his authority, how are you going to be standing there, you know, defending yourself against the lies if you don't know God for yourself and if you don't know his voice and if you don't know the word? So I'm here to tell you, friends, this is the time when you put away the CDs, the DVDs, the podcasts, you know, the, the, the Christian books. I'm sick and tired of seeing so many so-called Christian ministers and, 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 and pastors and leaders. All they keep pushing books is Christian books, and they're not pushing the book, which is the author and the finish of our faith, which is Jesus Christ. I mean, seriously, you guys, like that, you're doing a disservice. And when I see that, do not call yourself a pastor. Do not call yourself a woman or a man of God in ministry when all you keep rolling out is books from other people and not the book of my God, 
who is perfect and good and his word is power and it's life and it's a hammer and it's a sword and it's a fire. I'm not impressed by your ministry. I'm not impressed by what you have to offer. If you're not giving me chapter and verse, I'm going to have a problem with you and I will call you out and I will pull you aside and say, what are you doing, man or woman of God? You are called to ministry. You're called to preach the gospel, not preach your book, not preach your CD, DVD, not, not, not preach your 1-800-555, sow a seed. This is not the time for that, you guys. Listen, the Antichrist is here. Whether you like it or not, he is somewhere on this earth and he will be exposed when God says it's time. But in the meantime, we need to know the word of God for ourselves. We, this, at the end of the day, all these past two years, examine your life. Where has your life been these past couple of years? How's your walk with the Lord? What kind of Christian are you? Are you on fire? Are you, are you lukewarm? Are you cold? Are you shaking in your boots because of what you've seen the last couple of years? Are you strong and anchored in God? Lord, I praise you for the affliction. Lord, I praise you for the tribulation. Lord, I thank you for the shaking. Lord, you know what? Just like your Bible says that those that are anchored in you, those that are entered in your word we will not fall we will not slip in the name of jesus you give us our strength you give us our peace you give us our joy the joy of the lord is our strength thank you lord i'm not moving i'm not shaking i am anchored in god is that you ask yourself or are you on the other are you on the other side we you know you know you're all like wobbling all over the place it's like you know like all stressing out walking in fear walking in anxiety oh walking in doom and gloom if that is you do you have a problem church you have a problem you need to get delivered you need to spend time with the Lord. You need to stop seeking after men and women and get your face before the Lord. Go repent, live a, a holy life and get your face in the word of God that sets you free. Listen, there are a lot of Christians who have, uh, you know, are living with condemnation. They're living with chains. They're living with guilt. They're living with doom and gloom, negativity, fear and anxiety. And I'm like, wait a minute, these people, you don't know my God. You can keep playing church. You can keep going to these watered down sermons or these, these lukewarm, you know, tickle your ear pastors. They're not doing you a favor. In fact, they're sending you straight to hell because a true man of God, a true man of God who is called to ministry. And remember, you know, pastors, you know, their, their job as men of God is to take care of the flock. And when you see so many, instead of being pastors, they're butchers by promoting this jab by complying to this jab by worshiping the, the altar of Baal with this jab it is absolutely horrifying horrifying to see what they have done to the body of Christ you know and so I'm here to tell you listen um like the Bible says work out your salvation with fear and trembling without holiness no one will see the Lord Hebrews 12 14 and Philippians 2 12 get in the word okay you cannot depend on a pastor or a preacher, or a prophet, the first lady, the pastor's wife, you know, the person in the church, the worship leader, whatever. You cannot depend on these people to help your walk, okay? You can't. It is you and the Lord and the Bible. That is all you need, okay? Many are called, few are chosen, narrow is the gate. And going back to this prayer post, well, not a prayer post, but this post with the jam, it is heart-wrenching to see so many who have been bamboozled by this jab. In fact, here is the dream from the Lord regarding that. Um, this was the message. Those that got the juice or the jab, they're being traced due to a metal piece inside of them. Okay, I've seen it. It was frightening, so scary. I couldn't believe, uh, oh no, I, I did believe. But it, it, is, it is so scary to realize how millions of people have gotten the first dose, the second dose, now the third dose, now the booster. I mean, hello, do you not realize, can you not discern the dangers behind all this? Can you not discern the evil agenda? Can you not discern that this is all from the pits of hell? Oh yeah, I forgot. Because if you knew the Bible and you knew it from cover to cover and God warned about it, you would be able to discern. But that's what happens when you don't know the Bible. That's what happens when you don't spend time with the Lord. And you know what? I'm here to tell you, friends, now is the time. Now is the day. Get your house in order. Get your life in order. The Lord loves you, okay? If this is a brand new year. It is time to abide in Christ. As the scripture says, those that abide in the Lord, God abides in them. God is the vine and we are the branches, okay? As the Lord said it too, choose life. That the Lord sets upon us a blessing and a curse. Choose the life. 
choose the blessing so that you may live well, so that you may prosper, so that you may have a blessed life, so that you may walk into what God has for you. Do not let the enemy to kill, steal, and destroy more than he already has. It is time for restoration. Do you want to be restored? Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be mended? Do you want to be exalted in God's perfect time? Do you want to be used by the Lord? Do you want to be promoted by the Lord? Then the time is now in Jesus' name, okay? Repent of all wickedness and get your life in order. But the dream from the Lord was this, that those that got the juice are being traced by a metallic piece inside of them, okay? I've been warning and warning for two years and some people get it and some don't. And I'm just, I, it's just, again, it's heart-wrenching. It's heart-wrenching to see what's happening. Okay, uh, the next post, December the 21st, 2021. This is a word from the Lord regarding, again, the juice, okay? And this is what the Lord said. The wicked, aka the ones, the cabal, the, the evil demons, okay, the secret society, Luciferians, the wicked are using the juice or the jab in order to bend people, in order to bend them down, right? So they can bow down and worship their God known as the Antichrist. Then the Lord gave me the scripture, Romans 14, 11 says, for it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. And he gave me read, read Daniel chapter three and Revelation 13. Okay, the people that have refused the jab at all costs, they're the ones that resigned their jobs. They're the ones that said, I don't care if I don't travel. I don't care if I lose my job. Those are the ones that said, no, I'm not putting that poison in my body. Those are the ones that said, no, I don't care if, 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 if I can't have access to the gym. I don't care if I, don't, I can't get to a store. I don't care if I don't have access to the restaurant. I'll sacrifice myself. You know, I'm not having that poison in my body. I'll endure the persecution. I'll endure the, the isolation. I'll endure the attacks from people, all these crazy like jab people who are attacking others because they're not jabbed. Oh, they've been persecuted by their family members. They've been persecuted by their loved ones. And they say, Lord, I'm faithful to you, Lord. I'm resisting this poison. I'm resisting this jab. Those those people, as what God is saying, they are the Shamrach, Misha, and Abednego, spiritually speaking, because they're not bowing down to Baal. They know that's Baal. And they say, no, we worship only Jesus Christ. And, and we believe that God can go before us and God will defend us and God will honor us in his proper timing if it is his will. And that's, I'm here to tell you that to all those that made it, to all those that said, no, I'm not bowing down to Baal. God bless you. I pray that God honors you and blesses you in the mighty way and just show his name for your faithfulness and your loyalty to the Lord. Okay, next, next, next post. Uh, December 28th, 2021. This is a dream from the Lord. Uh, this is related to uh, sex trafficking. Anyway, in the dream, uh, pretty much God was just showing me to pray for the Virgin Islands uh, and especially for the children. Okay, let's pray for justice. That afternoon, I was talking to the Lord. I was like, oh, Lord. Jeez, God, okay, like, what are you showing me, Father? And you know, he was just, you know, he's just showing me again, you know, praying for the children that are related to sex trafficking. And um, ugh, it, it, again, so let's just keep praying for the children. I discovered that afternoon that, I didn't know this, but um, um, the, the home or the property of Epstein happened to be in the Virgin Islands. So let's just keep praying that God uproots everything. Just like he said a few months ago, he's going to uproot every single thing and let it be so the same thing in the Virgin Islands. And not only that, everywhere in this nation, every location, every place where these, this evil has continued and continues to be that we pray that God, you know, just exposes it all and uproots it and dismantles it and curses it at the root and just show his name. And we pray for the victims. We pray for the children and just show his name. Okay. So here is a great, great word from the Lord. And I'm almost done. This was the word that the Lord gave me back in December 28th, 2021. Three days prior to the new year, I said, Lord, I don't know what your what your thoughts are, you know, what's in your heart for 2022. And I heard the Lord say, 2022 is the time of the comeback. The time of the comeback. That's all I heard. Okay, I don't know when, I don't know how exactly, how God's going to do it. But that's all I heard him say at the time of the comeback. And it makes a lot of sense. And uh, I had a sister in Christ that asked me, well, does this apply to POTUS? Does this apply to, you know, to what exactly? And I would say, yes, it applies to everything. It applies to POTUS 45. It applies to the church. It applies to this nation. It applies to all those that are downtrodden. The, the time for the comeback, right? Uh, because, and then moments, uh, so that afternoon, I was in this, I was in this, uh, in, in this seat. And uh, hours later, after I got this word from the Lord, um, actually, let me preface a little bit. When God gave me this word, he reminded me of Moses, David, and Esther, okay, specifically, and Joseph. They were all written off, okay? Um, and um, and God was saying, you know, the Pharaoh, when he kicked out Moses, they, they wrote him off. Uh, you know, the enemies of Israel uh, wrote off, you know, um, Mordecai. They wrote off um, uh, Esther. 
They were saying they're finished. They're done. You know, we won. We're in power. You know, the gallows were set up. You know, and then the Lord reminded me of David. They said the same thing about David. Like, he's finished. He's done. And God was saying, but God came back. You know, God came to defend them. There was that comeback. You know, boom, there, were, there was Moses. Boom, there was David. Boom, there was Esther. Boom, there was there was a Mordecai, you know. And God was saying, like, the power of prayer, the power of fasting, that when people, when all those people were telling the people of God they were finished and done with, God came back, right? And God honored them, and God vindicated them, and God prospered them, and God saved them. Lord. And, and, and the Lord was just saying, I'm, he's going to do the same exact thing for his people, for us, you know. So, again, you know, how does that apply to our nation? How does apply to POTUS? Well, it does apply because as the Lord said it two years ago, that December 2019, the Lord said that uh, when Brandon was in, in, in Atlanta campaigning, the Lord said that back then, and I released that word, you know, last year, uh, the Lord said, let them, they're, uh, they're crowning their king like Adonijah, let them boast among themselves for in God's perfect timing, humiliation and shame will take place. And then right after the Lord said that, he spoke about President Trump the following. He said, daughter, I told you that President Trump is my is his David. He is the Lord's Esther. He is the Lord's Jeremiah, Nehemiah, and Moses. Let my people go. And the Lord also said that day, he's also the Lord's Solomon. For in God's timing, God's going to use him like Solomon to build the temple for these end times. And that temple is the body of Christ. Okay, remember what I told you. This whole thing is temporary. Adonijah, also known as Brandon, he temporarily stole the crown from Solomon. But you know how the story ended. God always wins. God's declaration, God's purpose is for Solomon to have to, to receive the crown. He received it, you know, in, in God's timing. And it's the same thing with President Trump. So what I'm saying all this is that the comeback, you know, get ready for the comeback. Get ready for the comeback as for our president. Get ready for the comeback for the church. Listen, all these wicked people who are using the Jews, right, to destroy mankind, to destroy the church, guess what? They're saying to themselves, ha, we won. The church is done. Ha, the, the, the humanity is finished. They're under our dominion. They're under our control. But see, what they fail to realize what in their, in their pride and their arrogance is that our God, the only God in the universe, there's only one God where every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess Christ is Lord. What they fail to realize in their pride, they can't even see straight because they have reprobate minds, is that our God is powerful. God has never left his throne. He rules. He reigns. He's such checkmate. And God's about to finish them off. God's about to rebuke them. God's about to release his judgment and his wrath upon, against the wicked in Jesus' name. And he's coming back for his people. He's coming back for the church. He's coming back for you and for me to defend us and vindicate us and to, and to, and to use us for these end times in Jesus' name. Okay? So I'm here to encourage you. Okay, the best is yet to come and only God knows exactly when. But you, do you see me stressed out? Do you see me, you know, flipping and flopping and wobbling all over the place? No. You know why? Because I made a decision to follow the Lord. I made a decision to be only anchored in God and in the Bible. God is my source. God is my strength. God is my rock. God is my fortress. God is my salvation. God is my savior. Jesus Christ is my savior. Okay, and my house is built on the rock, which is the Lord, not in people, not in places or things, but in the Lord. Okay, and I know what God has spoken. So anywho, that afternoon, when God gave me this word, I was in this spot and I was just like mesmerized, like, oh Lord, that's such a powerful word. This is so amazing. And I literally heard the Lord say, daughter, and this, this word was for me, but it's also for the body of Christ, for the remnant, those that are chosen. Those that are the ones who have labored and toiled and 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 wept and 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 you know they've been persecuted, but they were faithful to the Lord. This is what the Lord told me, and this is also for, for for those people. The Lord said, "Daughter, when other people wrote you off, I wrote you in." And I just like I teared up, and He was just saying, "When other people wrote you off, I wrote you in." And I'm here to share this word with you because guess what? Just a few days ago, and I have my journal in front of me. This is, this is an awesome word. This is a, the, the Lord gave me this word for an amazing leader, but it was also for the body of Christ. And this is what the Lord said, which coincides with the, you know, when, that, when other people write you, wrote you off, God wrote you in, right? This is what the Lord said, that the Lord is on the side of those who have been written off by man, but have been written only by the Lord. I'll repeat. This is a word from the Lord. He said, that God is on the side of those who have been written off by man, but have been written on by the Lord himself, okay? 
And that day, he gave me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, and you get a chance to go read it. It's about the blessings and the curses. But I'm here to, to encourage you, and I'll leave you with this, you guys. We, you know, we are in a very amazing time uh, of, of just history. Um, 2021, I praise God for the tribulation. I praise God for the trial. I praise God for the testing. Guess what? We needed it. The church needed it. Human beings needed it. And as we still continue to endure what happened in 2020, 2021, it was necessary because as the Lord says, God's ways are not our ways and God's thoughts are not our thoughts. How many of us have been rebellious? How many of us have been disobedient? How many of us have been carnal and fleshly and ungodly? And I'm talking for believer and non-believer alike, okay? And God allowed all this to test us. God has humbled us in the process. And I praise him for it because I see a lot of people who are finally submitting to the Lord. A lot of people who are finally realizing that they're nothing without the Lord. A lot of people who realize that they've lost a lot of things, a lot of people, right? And they lost loved ones. They lost their homes. They lost their finances, right? And a lot of these people, finally, their pride is coming off them. Their self-righteousness is coming off them. Their self-reliance is breaking off them. And they're finally surrendering and say, Lord, have your way. Lord, I'm nothing without you. Lord, I repent for I am a sinner. Forgive me of my wickedness, Lord, in Jesus' name. So when I see people coming to the Lord and they're giving their lives to Jesus, I praise God for everything he's allowed as on this nation and in the nations. Okay? So I want to encourage you before I close out, the best is yet to come. Okay? Remember, we are all called to serve the Lord. We all have to battle for our destinies. I know a lot of us, it's taken us weeks, months, seasons, and even years to walk into our promised land. Remember, the things of the Lord, they're not easy. Easy come and easy go is not of the Lord, as God shared that with me years ago. That comes from the devil. The things of God take time, okay? And God allows it all to purge us, to prune us, to perfect us, to test us, to our heart, our faith, our patience, our endurance, our stamina. That's all part of the walk. This walk with the Lord is not easy, but I will say this, it is so worth it. And I'm here to tell you to the remnant of body of Christ, get ready. Get ready, because I see the Lord's words coming to pass from the last couple of years, slowly coming to pass in the, front, in the, lives, of my, in the lives of my friends. And it's, such exci it's so exciting to see. What an exciting time to just to be alive. Um, I'm here to encourage you with the following, and I'll leave you with this. For the last several years, you know, God's been warning. And not only warning, but he's been, he's been saying, the time is coming where the righteous will laugh and dance and the righteous will rule and reign the tipping of the scales. And at the same time, it's time for the wicked to weep and mourn. I remember uh, about two years ago, the Lord said, walking papers is coming for the wicked inside and outside the church in four forms, resignations, public firings, exposure, and some God is calling home. The Lord also said back in March of last of 2020, the Lord said, daughter, just like he's going to give the walking papers to the wicked inside and outside the church, God is about to give the working papers to the righteous inside and outside the church. The righteous are those that have been obedient, those that have been faithful, those that are walking in humility, those that have picked up their cross and say, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I'm not selling out. You know, Lord, I'm going to obey you. I walk in holiness. I walk in the fire of you and, 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 and I'm walking in the spirit. Those people, the Lord said that, those are the ones that God's going to exalt in his proper timing. The Lord said that he's going to give working papers to the righteous inside and outside the church. And that, they're, that, they're, that the Lord is going to prepare them to occupy the positions of power and influence to carry out God's mission, says the Lord. Okay, the Ishmaels, those that are conceived in the flesh, have got to go for the time of those that are children of the promise, those that are conceived in the spirit, which is like the, those that are called with the spiritual mantle of Joseph, of Deborah, of Esther, of Isaac, of David. Those are the ones, Joseph's, those are the ones, okay, children of the promise that God's going to propel, that God's going to, you know, anoint and appoint to positions of power and influence to carry out God's mission on this earth. Okay, many are called to government. I know a few months back, I would say maybe three months ago, I heard him say that the people that are called to media, get ready because you're next, the people in media. If, so if, you're, if God is calling you to media, get ready, okay? Um, you know, so I'm here to share with you that the Lord's on the move. I remember he showed me for quite some time the tipping of the scales. I remember like a last, uh, I think it was the fall of 2020, where I heard the Lord say, um, 
Oh, it was so powerful. Um, that all the prayers, the tipping bowl, right? The tipping bowl, all the prayers that the righteous have been praying is that all those prayers were gonna be poured over, you know, over this earth, you know? So God is doing a new thing. I remember uh, years ago, he told me that Hollywood would become Hollywood, that the Lord was about to bulldoze his way. The Lord was about to sweep the land. God was about to flick off the filth. He, he showed me for years, you know, uh, his heart, you know, um, of justice. Um, I remember I released these words also that uh, the Lord said, the time is coming uh, where the wicked will weep and mourn. And he said that the wicked will squeal for the pigs that they are. The Lord showed me also Hillary Clinton being in jail. The Lord said it back in the summer of 2020, uh, CD, that when it comes to the CDC, lamentations is coming to them, says the Lord. That Bill Gates is gonna be, his, his network system is gonna be hacked. The Lord also said about Fauci that he's also a Satanist along with Dr. Burke. So all Satanists, says the Lord. Uh, you know, God was showing me also uh, how all their plots and their schemes, that the Lord said all those that operate underground, all those that operate at night, God's gonna pour out his light, says the Lord in the name of the Shua. But I just thank you, Lord God. I thank you for your justice, Father. I thank you, Lord God, that your word is not fall to the ground. As you have spoken it, everything done in secret will come to the light, unravel, disclose, reveal, and expose. And that man does not remove God, but it is God that removes man. That you said, Lord God, countdown. The countdown that you ambush the devil's plans, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. You ambush the devil's plans. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you made the church to be the head and not the tail, Lord God. And I pray for every remnant, sister and brother in Christ, God, that you have called, you have appointed, you have chosen for such a time as this. That we are not backing down, we are not retreating, we are not giving up because quitting is not an option, you guys. Okay, forfeiting your kingdom destiny and your kingdom purposes and your kingdom blessings and inheritances. They're not for to be forfeited. They're not to be given up. The enemy will use people. The enemy will you you know will, will use people even inside the church at times to get you to quit, to get you to, to get weary, to get you to doubt, to get you to give up. But I'm here to tell you, we are conquerors. We are victorious in Christ. We're not here on this earth, you know, to do nothing. We're here to fulfill a kingdom purpose and a kingdom calling for the glory of the Lord. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. But that means, that means you're chosen. That means you're called. That means that you have a divine purpose for God's glory. Yes, and it's going to cost you. It is going to cost you, you know, to walk in holiness. It is going to cost you in the sense of being persecuted and being hated before speaking truth, for standing up for the things of the Lord, for being a voice of, of, of truth and righteousness. It's going to cost you. People are going to be nasty to you. They're going to be jealous of you. They're going to be envious of you, whether it's in or outside the church. It is what it is. Look at Joseph. Look at David. Look at Esther. Look at all the characters in the Bible, how they were used by God. It cost them to walk in that anointing, okay? Iron sharpens iron. And I'm here to tell the body of Christ the following. Surround yourself with people that, are, that have wisdom, okay? Surround yourself with people that are perseverant, that are persistent, that they are not going to back down, that they're not going to quit, they're not going to give up, okay? We are called to be warriors in Jesus' name. Okay, we have the power and the authority in the name of Christ, the word, okay, the Holy Spirit inside of us that breaks the yoke, okay, and this is our time in Jesus' name, okay, I want to encourage you, even with America, this nation as the Lord, I mean, I live in Atlanta, and, you know, it's just, what a blessing, what an honor to live in this amazing state that I just, I, I have grown to love, I love Georgia, because there's a kingdom destiny for here in Georgia, this is the birthplace for revival, you guys. And I see the people of God, you know, uh, here in Georgia. We're standing in the gap for this nation because what happens in Georgia will reflect the rest of the Bible Belt. And then it's going to spread out through the, throughout the country and from America here on out to the rest of the world. As the Lord spoke, and America is, is, America is the, um, the, retain, the retention wall for the rest of the nations, okay? And to hear that word from God, what an honor. What a privilege to be in this in this amazing country called America. Are we backslidden? Yes. Is the nation committing a lot of sins? Absolutely. But there's also a great remnant of people that are repenting, that people are saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, there's a remnant here, just like Abraham. Lord, will you spare the land? If there's 40 righteous people, there are people praying like that, you guys. There is a kingdom destiny for this nation. We are the nation of the home of the brave, the land of the free, okay? And aside from our... If you look at it from a spiritual perspective, that this country was built on Judeo Christian principles, you know there's a covenant with America. And that's what God showed me years, two years ago when I did that that, that crusade all over the Bible Belt. I, I've been to Plymouth Rock. I was there on, on, on the 400 year anniversary of where this nation was built, where they made a covenant to the Lord. 400 years, 2020, 1620. 
And that's when God spoke to me, proclaim liberty to all the inhabitants of this land, for it should be a year of jubilee for you, says the Lord. Free at last, free at last, God Almighty, free at last. When God was showing me back then how God has called, has called this nation uh, to have a covenant with him. Okay, and the Lord said, just like the Hebrews waited 400 years to be set free, the Lord is about to set his people free, says God. I've been holding on to that word for two years because I know what God spoke to me in the secret place. I know what God spoke to me in every single location where I went there to sound the shofar and declare God's sovereignty and territory and will for this country. Okay, and God's word does not return void. I know what God has spoken regarding America. It's not the death of a nation, but a rebirth. And last but not least, what the Lord said in the summer of 2020 of August, the Lord said, when justice falls upon the wicked, it's going to be a jubilee for the people. For America is the birthing room and the birthing place for God's plans to manifest here on earth. Free at last, free at last, God Almighty, free at last. What does the Bible say? Those whom the sun sets free is free indeed. The truth, my friends, the truth shall set you free. This is why America, God, sorry, this is why God is not done with America, you guys. Okay? It's, he's not done with this nation. You ha we all have a purpose. We all have we, we all have a purpose and a calling to give God praise, to give God glory, and to fulfill what He has called us is to preach the gospel and to get people into the ark of Christ before His soon return. I am ready for revival. I have friends in ministry. I see how God is doing great things in their lives, and I honor them and I bless them and I pray for them that God will exalt them in due season, that God will open up doors that no man can shut, that God will anoint them, give them a greater anointing, a greater prophetic revelation prophetic insight to uh, to usher the kingdom of god and to declare the word of god with power and authority to set the captives free okay so i leave you with that i want you to be encouraged i, I hope that this message was uplifting it brought you confirmation hold the line stand in the gap we do this for the lord we do this for the nation we do this for the children we do this for the next generation lord in the name of jesus we do this for the, we, we do this for the next generation you guys we do it for the children who are being under attack in every sense of the word. We have to be loud. We have to be bold. We have to be courageous in the name of Christ. We are not backing down. We're not complying to the enemy. This is our time, you Lord. In the, this is our time, you guys, in the name of Jesus. This is our time. We're here to occupy. We're here to pillage, plunder, decimate the kingdom of darkness in the name of Christ. And we take back this country. We take back the families. We take back the schools. We take back the entertainment industry. We take back the business sector. We take back the companies. We take back the politics and government, the church, in the name of Christ, where every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You guys, we take it back. All those years that the locusts have eaten, this is our time for restoration. This is our time of redemption and vindication because our God goes before us in Yeshua's name and God always wins. You always wins in the name of Jesus. So be encouraged, okay? Dry your eye, suck it up, buttercup, and walk to your promised land. Testify. Have a testimony. It is time. It is time that we give testimonies of God's goodness because we are told the promise and we will taste and see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living in Jesus' name. That is our portion. That is our cup. We're not orphans, you guys. We have an almighty God, almighty Father, in the name of Abba, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, who has great things for us and we're going to walk it. We're going to walk it. We're going to taste it. We're going to feel it and see in the name of Yeshua about the goodness of God in our lives for our households too in Jesus name and it is time for us to rule and reign it is time to put the people of God in positions of power and influence for God's glory we are meant to be the head and not the tail that is our that is our the promises of the Lord over us so I'm here to encourage you hold the line stand still stand your ground as the Lord spoke it stand your ground hold your position and declare God's promises over your life for God is faithful and true in Jesus name so I gotta go I hope you've been encouraged I hope you've been blessed if you have prayer requests feel free to message me and I will talk to you guys soon love you all and I'll talk to you soon take care bye-bye